So let's now get a little bit more specific. So I'm sure many of you here in the audience have received that really annoying phone call from your bank or a credit card company telling you that your current account has just been blocked, frozen, due to what looked like a suspicious transaction. And they asked you to confirm whether it was a legitimate transaction. So that is fraud detection. And guess what? AI is pretty good at it. In fact, during a project that I worked on, um, we managed to deploy AI that replaced uh, a human expert role-based system to, um, well, achieve amazing things. So for starters, it achieved a 10 times, 10x efficiency improvement in the form of cost cutting of the operation. But also, it ensured that you, get, you got um, fewer of those phone calls, fewer legitimate transactions were blocked, and then also, it managed to detect an extra 10% of genuine fraud. So that is pretty cool. But you know what? It doesn't really kind of change the world the way that driverless car does. But then thing, where, where things get a little bit more interesting and impactful is it turns out that fraud detection belongs to a general class of problems called anomaly detection, which have a much wider impact in finance. So we're all here in London, where just not so long ago, um, there was a bank called Barings Bank, where the queen used to bank, and it was more than 200 years old, and it no longer exists, not because of the financial crisis, but because of one guy called Nick Leeson, who was a rogue trader. And he um, managed to um, drive this very old venerable institution to bankruptcy single-handedly. So if you can use anomaly detection to, uh, to detect this kind of activity, as well as things like insider trading, which is illegal, uh, market abuse, as well as kind of violations of uh, the workplace code of conduct, then you have a lot more impact that is of societal relevance, not to mention, last but least, cybersecurity.